January is the first month of the year. In the Northern Hemisphere, usually considered the second month of winter. It is, on average, the coldest month of the year within most of the Northern Hemisphere, where it is the second month of winter and the warmest month of the year within most of the Southern Hemisphere, where it is the second month of summer. Why does the new year start on January 1st? According to Britannica.com, in many countries, the new year begins on January 1st. However, this wasn't always the case. In fact, for centuries, other dates marked the start of the calendar, including March 25th and December 25th. So how did January 1st become New Year's Day? We can partly thank the Roman King Numa Pompilius. According to tradition, during his reign, century 715 to 673 BCE, Numa revised the Roman Republican calendar so that January replaced March as the first month. Some resources claim that Numa also created the month of January. However, there is evidence that January 1st was not made the official start of the Roman year until 153 BCE. In 46 BCE, Julius Caesar introduced more changes. Though the Julian calendar, as it became known, retained January 1st as the year's opening date. With the expansion of the Roman Empire, the use of the Julian calendar also spread. However, following the fall of Rome in the 5th century CE, Many Christian countries altered the calendar so that it was more reflective of their religion. And March 25th, the Feast of the Annunciation, and December 25th, Christmas, became common New Year's Days. It later became clear that the Julian calendar required additional changes due to a miscalculation concerning leap years. The cumulative effect of this error over the course of several centuries caused various events to take place in the wrong season. It also created problems when determining the date of Easter. Thus, Pope Gregory VIII introduced a revised calendar in 1582. In addition to solving the issue with leap years, the Gregorian calendar restored January 1st as the start of the new year, while Italy, France, and Spain were among the countries that immediately accepted the new calendar. Protestant and Orthodox nations were slow to adopt it. Great Britain and its American colonies did not begin following the Gregorian calendar until 1752. Before then, they celebrated New Year's Day on March 25th. Over time, non-Christian countries also began to use the Gregorian calendar. China in 1912 is a notable example, though it continued to celebrate the Chinese New Year according to a lunar calendar. In fact, many countries that follow the Gregorian calendar also have other traditional or religious calendars. Some nations never adopted 
the Gregorian calendar and thus start the year on dates other than January 1st. Ethiopia, for example, celebrates its new year known as Enkotatash in September. Did you know that on January 13, 1930, was the first ever Mickey Mouse cartoon appeared in newspapers throughout the U.S.? And on January 22, 1895, Life Boy Soap was trademark registered. And on January 23rd, 1849, a patent was granted for an envelope making machine. On January 26, 1875, the first electric dental drill was patented by George Green. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Verses 1 to 14 ESV, it says there, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What gain has the worker from his toil? I have seen the business that God has given to the children of men to be busy with. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, He has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceive that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also, that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. I perceive that whatever God does endures forever. Nothing can be added to it, nor anything taken from it. God has done it, so that people fear before Him. That which is already has been, that which is to be already has been, and God seeks what has been driven away.